John in the Circle and Whistler. And I uh, just wanted to come on and talk to you guys about what you can do when you can't snowboard. So I know like a lot of places in Ontario, in Europe and other places, the resorts are closed. And I thought like, what could be the best thing to do when you can't snowboard? And it's definitely skateboard. And like John here at the Circle is one of the most passionate skateboarders I, I know. So perfect person to have a conversation with, talk about skateboarding and how it improves uh, snowboarding. But yeah, John, what do you think? Is that is that a good topic? It's a very good topic. Spot? I love it. Sick, man. Cool. So if you guys have any questions for John about skating, if you have any questions for me, um, or if you're just hanging around in Whistler Village and want to pop by the circle, come bang on the glass. We're, we're right in front of the window here. But um, yeah, so for me, like my thoughts on skateboarding, like I've, I'm like a fairly beginner skateboarder. And anytime I've put a little bit of effort into skateboarding, I've like seen it translate into my snowboarding so much. So if like the more people we can get to skateboard, I think that just helps snowboarding as well. John, how did you, like, where did you get your start? Did you start by skating or snowboarding first? I actually started skating first. Like, I feel like I've probably been skateboarding for maybe a couple of years before I actually started like fully getting into snowboarding. And it's just like, I mean, the area I'm from, it's like there's there was no real shop so like it wasn't it's as, as accessible um but i remember when i finally did get my first setup yeah um that naturally for me it was like oh i'll just do the rail tricks that i do on my skateboard on my snowboard and it was just like and i for me in my head i was like oh it's easier like i'm attached so i just thought it was like it was definitely still a learning curve because it's yeah when you haven't snowboarded before but yeah it was just like go straight, hit a rail. Like, yeah. For me, it was like, carving took a while, actually. Like, right. it's definitely different. I mean, especially moving out here in Whistler and like, I mean, riding powder for the first time, like that's different, but yeah, I definitely noticed a big difference. Even when you're just like on the, say you're on the lifts and you're watching people go through the park, like you can kind of tell from the way someone snowboards if they skate, because they kind of know, oh, like this trick, like on a snowboard, like these tricks come from skateboarding. This is what it looks like on a skateboard that you'll basically mimic the same thing. Yeah, and I guess too, it's like the, it's like you're right, not all of snowboarding kind of totally translate tr translates from skateboarding, but it does like all the balance, all the like, uh, like yeah, tricks and stuff, hitting rails, um, it all kind of like blends together. Um, so when you were skateboarding, um, I guess like John and I were both from Ontario where you can really only snowboard like two months of the year. So skateboarding is that thing you can do almost like- A lot. I mean, I never had a pass around. back yeah. home. Okay, but yeah. yeah, we, we basically skate as much and as long as we can. Like even like in the winter, like I remember being times where like, it would be so cold, but it was like, it was dry. And yeah. we would still find a way like, we gotta go skate. Yeah. I mean, I'm still kind of like that, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> like, we're like waiting here, like me and my roommate, I'm like, we're waiting for it to be dry in Vancouver. We're like, if it's 10 degrees, we're going like. Yeah, yeah, so uh, yeah, we're both from Ontario. I'm from Oshawa, John's from, you're from Lindsay? I'm from Lindsay area, yeah. born in Oshawa. Nice, oh yeah, I oh, actually, sick. yeah. oh crazy man. So yeah, like skateboarding, um, I was never into it as when I was a kid, but I can definitely see like my friends that skateboarded, how much like it translated into their snowboarding. And it did take me like longer to pick up snowboarding, I think, than other people just because those first couple of days, like how is it for you on your first day of, of riding? Like did the skateboarding just like take you into turning straight away or was it? Not there... so much like the turn, like I was saying before, like the, like hitting rails, I felt like I was just like, it felt more natural because coming from skating. Yeah. But I remember like, like catching edge, like carving, like going pretty fast and just like hooking my heels like really hard. Like I remember like that was the hardest thing for me was learning how to like link turns because that's different from skating, but yeah, I mean, yeah, the, basically like the rail stuff, like the freestyle things, like spinning and stuff, Yeah, that all I think transfers over like easily. That's like, yeah, that's crazy to hear because when I got into snowboarding, I feel like because I didn't have that foundation in skating, it like all the tricks took that much harder. I had no background, so everything was like fresh and new. Yeah, it would be, like for me, it's different, like, like not, because I basically skipped that where it was like, oh, I'll just, do this and like it, it just translated yeah. so easily but yeah it's definitely i definitely respect for the people that start from scratch because it's definitely a hard longer harder learning curve yeah and uh so i guess the other part too is skating it is so much more accessible than snowboarding like you can pick up a skate setup 
Like, what's the typical price for like a skateboard? I mean, a full and... skateboard. Like, if you're going like, if you're going like dream setup, yeah, you can go in from like, say, one eighty to three hundred. Okay, but you can still get some basic ones that are one hundred fifty bucks for like a really good, like beginner setup. Um, and it's kind of cool with that is like once you have a skateboard, like you're good for a while. Yeah. Like I remember as a kid, like when I got my first real board, like I think I had the board for like a year. Whereas like now I'm setting up new ones like every three weeks to a month. But like I said, if you're just starting out, like what I love about skateboarding, it's so easy to do. Like there's no like putting gear on. There's no like getting to the hill. It's just like you can, I mean, depending where you live, like you could do it. Like maybe you could do it in your basement. Maybe you could do it like out in front of your house. Like it's, and for me, I love is there's some days where like, I'll go to the skate park. I'll be like, I really want to skate. And I get to the park and you're like, I'm not really feeling it. And you can still hang out and have just as good of a time because of like the vibe and everyone's kind of right there. Yeah. We're like, I mean, nothing against snowboarding. Snowboarding is still the best as well. But you're, it's constant like go, 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 go. And you're on the lift where like you can hang out in a zone. Say someone was skating a, you know, a certain feature. Yeah. You can hang out right there with them and you're still having an awesome time. Sick, man. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've had that same experience when you're on the mountain snowboarding, it's kind of like, yeah, you get, you get on the, the lift, you go for your run. It's just like nonstop where in skateboard progression or just like at the skate park, it is more of like a hangout and you can even just chill, watch your friends, like learn tricks, maybe session something for a half an hour, 45 yeah, minutes. Yeah, for sure. And you like chill out, maybe, yeah, grab some food, come I back. Mean, and you can do that with snowboarding too. Like yeah. I always say, like I, when I was a kid, like that's all we did is like, we would just have like a rail in our backyard and you would just like hike that rail all day. And it's like, that has the same feel as like skating does. And like, it's pretty rare that I do it here that I would hike a rail in the park because no, like most people don't want to do that they just want to like go 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 but i was like yeah. i mean if like there's been times where we've just kind of posted up on like a feature and you're hiking it and it's like everyone's feeding off each other and yeah you're just watching and like maybe you're into it maybe you're not but like either way you're still having like a good time yeah i guess the other like um yeah the big thing too like the reason i really want to make this video was i know like yeah where you can't snowboard right now and if it's not going to be open till next season like getting a skateboard set up and like if you can uh, I know a lot of places it's still winter and, and it's cold, but if you can start getting onto a skateboard and even if it's in your basement or like in a parking lot down the street, wherever it is, it's going to like get you on the path to like, you're going to be progressing uh, in your snowboarding at the same time. So this time next year, when you, when the mountains are open again, you're going to feel that progression. Like the, you know, the couple summers I spent skateboarding, I, I saw it translate so much uh, into my snowboarding just with the balance and everything. Um, but yeah, do you find it sometimes if you get away from one or the other, does like getting into w one back improve both? Have you noticed that? It's like, I always take the same thing. It's like when we finally basically, if you're snowboarding all season, you're like, all right, it's skate time. And I haven't skated in like months. Yeah. It's weird. Like you get, you get on your board and you look down and you're like, it's so small. Right. <laughs> like it feels so small. And yeah. Like, there's certain things that do feel like different. Like, like, I mean, doing a nose press to a nose grind, it's like the press you're like pressing or like with the grind, you got to balance. So that's kind of different. Okay. But I always like, there probably would be a difference. Like, like say if I only snowboarded and then coming back to the park, like say you snowboard all season, then you have four or five months off and then coming back, like you haven't done a board slide, you know, for that, that gap that like doing a board slide on your snowboard might feel weird, but like with me, a lot of the tricks are kind of similar with like, you know, like the rail tricks where you're kind of doing the same thing on your skateboard or snowboard. So it's like, it doesn't feel like you haven't done it for that long. You kind of, in your head, you always get like, oh, it's just this motion. And it's like a little different, but like it's somewhat the same and enough that it doesn't feel super foreign when you come back to it. Right. Has there been like a, has there been a snowboard trick that you've been working on that you didn't get in the winter and you just progressed with it? In skateboarding through the summer there's certain things that you definitely you notice but i feel like it's kind of like all mental yeah like i always like that is like the biggest block and like there's certain tricks where it's like you think about it long enough and it's almost like you've learned it without even doing it because you've just like you know broken it down in your head so many times which is like oh i just got to do this and and then there's like or there's days where say you're trying a new trick and you're like wow that's really scary and then you like think about it so much and then you're like go to try it again and you're like oh, today's the day. And you like that gap of like what you were kind of scared of, like isn't scary. And then that gets you over like that hump. Nice. Yeah. Crazy. 
Um, cool. Let's uh, let's check out some of the questions from you guys as well. Um, so Chris says, can, uh, can you buy a complete setup for about one hundred and twenty dollars? You could. It may not be the best. Like, I mean, there's I mean, for me, like my first board, like I got from Toys R Us, like it was like a Nash and like I didn't know any better. I was just like, that's a skateboard. But that got me in like and that's kind of like that's like the stepping stone where like you got to start somewhere. And I mean, if you can find something that, like I said, it meets the price that you can do. It's like, that, that's a good start because I mean, say you spent 300 bucks and then you tried it and you're like, this isn't really for me. Yeah. You waste that money. So like, if you can find something cheap or even secondhand, it's like, it's, it's good to just start somewhere. And uh, somebody was asking too, does like, if somebody's never skateboarded, but they snowboard, will the snowboard uh, skills transfer into skateboarding? I It's a little bit, it's a different balance point, but yeah. like, you'll get the like, you're sure you'll have like, you'll be comfortable with like already that sideways motion and movement. Yeah. Um, and then you'll kind of have to work from there. Yeah, for me, what I found going from, because I learned to snowboard first and then tried skateboarding and it was like some of the uh, movements were similar, but what really helped me progress in skateboarding was once I learned how to fall. Like once I could actually like fall off my snowboard and, and kind of roll out of it or just like run out of something, that kind of gave me that extra push to, to start put, trying things. Oh, knowing how to fall is, huge yeah because yeah. i mean i'd like to, i mean knowing how to commit is really me and my friends talk about it all the time yeah. when you watch like a trick tip video and like you watch it and it's like yeah the trick like that's not really like the hard part like it's like the mental game of like committing yeah because when like when you don't commit is a lot of times is when you get the most hurt yeah that's like uh i guess that's the mental side that's like s similar it's like the you, and both you need to be able to commit and you also need know need to know how to fall yeah it, it's, it is a combination for yeah, sure yeah so that's yeah it's an interesting crossover right there um uh ggpb uh with the just uh trick progression yeah how do you find like that's kind of open-ended but how do you find the progression and tricks between skateboarding and snowboarding is there is there a big difference like do you do you find you progress faster in one one over the other I mean, I guess it just depends on the way you're doing it. It's not like we were talking before, like with skateboarding, like if you're, if you really wanted to learn, like say you're, you're starting, you're like, I'm going to learn a 50, 50 grind. It's like you, the amount of times that you can try say within half an hour is insane. Like you're right. just like, go, 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 go. And where is if you're like riding a resort and you're just like riding the chair, it's like, you may get to try that trick that you're trying to learn, like, you know, once every 20 minutes. Right. And that plays like huge into progression. Like that's why like there's a resort in Minnesota or actually it's in Wisconsin, um, but it's called Trollhagen, Trollhagen and they have like yeah. a rope tow and the park is right on there. And you can literally, the kids that come out of there are unreal. And it's, we've, it's gotta be because of that reason. Like the rope tow is right there. They can literally like hit a rail, get on the rope tow, get off the rope tow early, like at any point and basically just hit that feature like a hundred times in a day. And it's like, if, if you want to progress, that kind of is the best way is like, it's just repetition of just like over and over and over and over again. And like, you will figure it out. Or like, I always say with like, I mean, tricks and snowboarding is like, people are like, how do you, how do you do this? And it's like, sometimes you got to like, you do need to take that slam or like, I mean, and hopefully you don't get hurt, but you know, you take that slam and you go, okay, this is what I did wrong. I'll work on that. And it just helps you. Like you just, you always just, I mean, we learn from our mistakes. Yeah. That's actually very interesting that like i never thought of it quite like that before is that in skateboarding you try something so much and so many times where i feel like in snowboarding yeah like you were saying because it's like one run every 20 minutes yeah. and i do notice that the snowboarders that come from skateboarding will spend way more time like focused on like maybe one or two features in the park or just like a certain line and really getting it down nailing it where for myself like i don't have that background so i might like meander a bit and be like off in the trees or off in the powder and on that like powder day the the snowboarders that are coming from skateboarding are still in the park There's, still working on I'm those kind of still that like, <laughs> like the days like i mean I, I love riding powder but it's got to be like 20 plus centimeters because like, of it it's like that thing i'm like it's <laughs> yeah. gotta be like really good where you can like go into trees yeah but if it's like one of those days where like it's soft in the park like you're like i can try things that like i was a little scared of before like because falling won't you know, it won't hurt as much. Yeah. Um, but that's a cool, yeah, that's actually the, it's just that mental, it's a different mental game than, yeah, skateboarding and snowboarding. Yeah, like that's that. the way I've always been. It's like, um, I'm like, park or pow. Right. That's such a strong skill to have coming over is like, 
I, I feel like, yeah, it's, you're going to progress more when you're focused and when you're getting those repetitions in. Um, I think I'm like, I've started to learn that the last couple of years of just, and maybe it comes from a little bit of skate practice is because, yeah, when you're skateboarding, you almost like are just focused on like one ramp, one feature. Oh, yeah. Just over one line. And you might do it for an hour or two and then... And land it once. And land it once, yeah. yeah. And then when you get that, one, you get it once and you just get that feeling and you, you have that accomplishment. Or even getting close. Yeah. Like you're trying and trying and trying, you're not getting where, and you get that one that you're like, that was kind of it. Yeah. And that that's enough to motivate you to like keep going. Yeah. Where it's it's different with snowboarding. It's like, it, like is it because of like one lap every 20 minutes, it makes it hard. But I mean, a lot of the tricks I've just kind of like, it's like a natural progression of like, oh, I want to learn this trick. Okay, like what skills do I need to unlock that? Like, and like, it just, rep you just pick a feature and you go, okay, on this rail, always I am going to do switchboard slides. And you just do switchboard slides like all day. Like every run, you just like, you know, you do a bunch of other things, but every time you get to that same thing, like switchboard slide, it's like, you do a bunch, like, yeah, you'll probably fall, but eventually yeah. you're going to be figuring it out and you'll get closer and closer and then it just feels natural. Yeah. Awesome. That's like a, yeah, that's really interesting. Um, the other thing I saw a question somebody asked, like how much harder is skateboarding than snowboarding? I think it's way harder. Way, it's way I mean, harder. Way, yeah. One, you're not attached, but there's just, I mean, I'd say there's more tricks. The consequences. The, yeah. Like it's like, yeah. you definitely got to know how to fall. Um, but it's worth it. I feel like too, because it's way harder, like the, the range of progression is so much bigger too, because even if you are uh, like a beginner, um, because it's so hard, just like if you spend that time as a beginner, like getting to like beginner to intermediate style, like range, you're going to learn so much. And then there's so much more still to learn. Oh, it like, never ends. Like I'm it's, yeah. still, like I still learn stuff and I still get like, I mean, snowboarding too, but yeah, yeah like it never gets old. Like that feeling of progressing and just being like, wow, like I learned that. And like, and how, like when you learn something, you're like, oh my God, I learned that. And now that unlocks this and that it just keeps going like there's so many tricks that, like if you break it down in your head like like i've heard a lot of people just say like certain tricks are like oh like switch back five it's like it's like a switch back one and then like a front three or like whatever like that's yeah. the way that they break it down in their head is like like i remember with switch front boards i'm not as good as them as i used to be but i used to think like okay i'll pop in and then it's just a regular front board but like i'm popping switch and like you that's I mean, everyone's got their process, but like, it's how you break it down in your head is if you're just like, oh, it's just this. Yeah. It makes it way easier if it's just like, yeah, it's a different trick, but you just got to like, okay, I do this. And then it's just like doing this, which is kind of the same. And is whatever it is that you do, can do in your head, like, yeah, whatever works for you. Uh, Chris says, nice skate shot, by the way. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> so the circle, they have uh, like mostly snowboard, um, products for the winter but in the summer it's yeah. a full flip they'll be yeah when do you guys get all your skateboard stuff in? it usually comes in the spring like, i mean usually comes early pretty early spring like yeah. usually there's still snow here but there's definitely a point where like it's starting to warm up and then like me and some friends here just we all get shovels together and we're like okay it's time <laughs> and we just like spent hours at the skate park like chipping ice and shoveling it out nice and it's nice because all it takes is like there's that time where like if it's just dry, if it's sunny, you're like, we'll have a little zone. Like those, the park will be full of snow, but we'll have like a zone. They're like, this is skatable. And it's funny how it flips. Like there's definitely a certain point that like once it becomes a little skatable, you look up because the mountain is like right there for us. And you're like, ah, oh, it seems like so much work. Like where you're like, <laughs> I'll just go skateboard because it's like so easy to do. Yeah. And skateboarding can be like your mode of transportation too. Like going, oh, for sure. going to school, going to get food. All that I mean, kind I did of stuff. it as a kid, like going to work. Like I'd skate to work all the time. Um, uh, Harry wants to know, what do you think about scooters? Well, we won't talk about it. Uh, all right. We'll skip the, <laughs> skip the scooter. <laughs> um, and uh, any tips for longboard longboarders getting into snowboarding? Uh, I guess that's I mean, like a, that's kind of like a different, I feel like, I don't know. I feel like that, I feel like the way that longboards carve. Yeah. Cause like with, with a skateboard, they're like, it's like a tight turning radius where like longboards are like, it's, it's way slower that that would feel more like carving on a snowboard. I'd like the longboarders of the skate community, sort of like the hard boots, hard booters of the skate, of the snowboarding community. Kind of. It's like that. It's like. Okay. Semi frowned upon, but I mean, you got to start somewhere. Yeah. Um, somebody asked where the sh where the shop is. So we are on Main Street in Whistler, uh, right across from Domino's. Yeah, come hang. 
Yeah, grab a slice of pizza and then, then come over. Um, all right, tons of, uh, tons of good question, guys. Thank you guys for all the great questions. We got 147 people watching, 44 likes. Cool. All right, people asking about the Orca. Uh, we got Pepe shouting out Yo John. Yo, what up? Do you know Pepe? Oh, oh yeah, dude. Pepe Kraus. Dude, he's the little homie here. He uh, like so <laughs> he like kite surfs and he's like little little blonde kid. He's German. Nice. He's sick. <laughs> All right, we got some uh, snowboard related questions too. Uh, Sakarto uh, wants to know: Do you guys still have the Kazu Atlas bindings in stock at the Circle? We do not. It is oh, sold out. Damn. Cho sold out. As yeah, say. those are those are pretty nice bindings. Um, hey, 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 wants to know, do you work at the circle? I do. You could yeah. say that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Stefan, tips for board control. Um, Skate or snow. Yeah, it's a good question. Yeah. What, uh, I guess it's, it's different. I mean, just ride. Like, I remember. How I remember, do you prevent, uh, how do you prevent when you get those, like, the speed wobbles? I've had those. I mean, like, everyone says, like, like, actually, this crew, if you want to see dudes go fast, watch yeah. this crew, GX1000. Okay. They just bomb crazy hills, but. Nice. I mean. You build ankle muscle, which kind of helps, but okay. a lot of times you just you just hold on and hope you don't die, basically. <laughs> oh, man. If you're going that fast. Uh, Gabriel wants to know, do you think that if you never did a certain trick on the snowboard, but you know how to do it mentally, do you think that it is possible just to do it, or do you have to learn it step by step? I think it'll help overcome, because I like as we were talking before, like mentally, I think mental is the strongest part, is like, because like if you in your head if you've thought about it so much you'll just be like oh I've thought about this and then you can it helps you just commit and go for it yeah um, but yeah there's definitely some tricks that there, there's some I, there is some tricks that I find weird that I can do them on my on my skateboard that I can't do on my snowboard and I think that's weird right yeah but I mean that's that is just... weird <laughs> <laughs> um, I think too it's it's kind of a bit of both you you sort of need to put yeah have the visual and the mental game but then put it put it together with the skills. Um, so like, for example, if you want to do like a backside 180, but you're not like comfortable being like carving on your toe edge. I think if you get the mental picture though, then you'll like see what pieces you need to put together in order to do that trick. And I'm sure it's the same way with skateboarding. You like, you can kind of feel what you're missing from a trick and like what you need to kind of throw in there. Is that kind of a thing where it is like, you'll try something over and over and over and over again and like get it. But then there's like one. We're like, it just like something just a little bit different. And then it like clicks in your head and you're like, oh, that's what I have to do. And then it's yeah. like, it's fun from there. Cause then you, then it's like on, like, you're just like, oh, I got this now. And then you've learned what it is that you need to do to kind of like make that trick happen. Um, uh, Ryan wants to know, Ooh, should I ask this question? What is it? Let me see. Favorite skateboard brands. Oh, I don't even, there's so many. So I mean, GX1000, Polar, Crooked. I mean, there's way, there's a lot of really good ones out there. But just like, that's kind of like what I always mention, just the, the people behind it are like huge for me. Like this crew, GX1000, like it's like a bunch of just like super cool dudes that just bomb hills. And they just like, I remember just like, they're always a crew, GX1000. And then for them, they were like, started making like clothes. And I was like, they're making clothes, I'm down. Like, how do I get this stuff? Do you find that the like skate snowboard culture is very different? Like I know that there's the blend of it, but like what do you think are the biggest differences between skate culture and snowboard culture? Because I know like I mean, you, you talk about like the people behind it. Is it is it the brands in snowboarding that have that skateboard background that are, there are like some, the strongest? I don't even know because like I mean Burton is obviously huge, and I don't really think that they come from a skateboard background. But like right. there are some brands that like, it's just the way they like their pro with the, the product looks, but like one of my favorite ones, as far as like, it's like, I would say it's the most skate brand, snowboard brand is, uh, it's my friend's company, um, Public, like Public Snowboards. Like you just look at their graphics and it just has that skate feel to it. Like it just, you can just tell, like it, it, it feels different. The vibe of them is just like, it's like it feels like there's like a skate company called quasi or like palace and like this company feels like that it's just like the direction that they're going for i mean you could i mean dinosaurs will die is like i've mentioned them before but yeah same thing it's like 
they just run it like certain companies like i mean i'm not hating at all but you can just feel like they're you're just like they just want to make money well, and like that's you can see that where yeah there is some ones that are just like more core i guess well i think you can see it um because yeah with the brands where there's like that strong like loyalty and a crew and um it's not just yeah uh blanket marketing to everyone yeah. like but you see i yeah. mean like i feel like yes like yes is like owned by snowboarders but you can really I, like i feel like and all those the owners like they love surfing yeah and i feel like maybe i don't know if it's because i know that they like surfing but like i feel like the brand does have like a surf vibe which is really uh, cool yeah that's true yeah the whole like uh with the yes and like the uh it does have that water sports yeah like sort it, of look. it's cool like you can tell that they have like those guys love surfing and that like their boards give off like that hey if you want to surf like ride our stuff uh chris wants to know john do you have a favorite skateboarder or like a couple of favorites mean, that's that's like a, <laughs> that could go on forever i mean number one i don't even know do you have any couple names at the moment that you're you're liking i mean right now i mean i love anything miles silvis is the best um there's this dude um gustav tonneson he's from norway okay um I mean, Canadians, like the homie Spencer Hamilton, like he lives in Vancouver. I mean, there's way, there's way too many good ones. Especially nowadays, everyone's good. Like, it's hard, but nice. I feel like for me, there's times where, like, certain people where I just, like, fiend. I'm like, okay, everything they do, like, I just want to see, like, whatever it is they're doing. Like, I, like, it doesn't matter what it is. I drop an Insta clip. I'm like, oh, my God, what is it? Like, yeah. you just know it's going to be awesome. Um, okay, so uh, Wyatt wants to know, what's the best trick to start with? snowboarding i guess snowboarding or skateboarding what would you say i'll do the snowboarding half what would you say is the best trick to start with for skateboarding i mean i guess it depends on your ability i mean like if you i, I, mean, I would ollie i guess an like, ollie? i remember like i'd probably say ollie it's like it took me a long time but i mean it's definitely different now like from when i started like now it's like you can youtube everything and yeah. like what is what is capable is you can just see it like you're like oh that's what people do but I feel like once you learn the ollie, it like changes your life. Like I'll never yeah. forget the moment <laughs> of like when it clicked. Like I'll, I feel like for real, I'll never forget it. Of like the first time I ollied onto something, you're like, yeah, no way. And then you learn to ollie <laughs> onto something, like on a curb, and you learn to ollie off a curb, and you're like, oh my god, I've never had so much air in my life. Like it's unreal. And then like that, I mean, the ollie does unlock everything. Right. I think that's like a big thing. Like we were talking about before about how. Yeah, the unlocking. So in snowboarding, it's like you can kind of get lost trying to do a bit of everything. But if you do like spread yourself too thin, you don't start to unlock those tricks. Say, where, what's, what's the saying? Trick of jack of all trades, master of none. There you go. One of those those that's that's that saying. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, skateboarding really focuses you in and like just yeah, you start to unlock one thing at a time. Um, and I would say the same thing. Like in snowboarding, it's the ollie. Once you can, once you can ollie, that's kind of teaching you how to jump, how to get air. Um, even for like boxer rail tricks, like you need to have some air at a, at a point. So being able to ollie is so important. Um, oh, there was a really good question that I just missed. Okay, so we got that one. Best snowboarding first trick. Um, Ryan wants to know, have you ever done street snowboarding? What do you guys think about that? And um, that's, that's like another straight from skateboarding like crossover. Is this is the skate style? I mean, for where I'm from, like, there's no the closest resort is like 40 minutes away. Okay, and that's like all we did. Like, I'd like me and my friends. Like, we had like we basically had like rails in our yards, and we would go to each other's houses and just like hit a rail all day, and then we'd be like, okay, like let's go hit street rails, and we'd be like we got snow, and like really close to my house actually, like it was downhill, like I could walk there with my snowboard stuff in like 10, 15 minutes. There was like a perfect down rail with like a natural drop in, and like we would meet up there and just like hit this like street rail like all day and it was like you never got kicked out and i mean that's just like the way i grew up as far as like watching i mean jp walker was my favorite snowboarder as a kid things like that and it's like yeah. those guys just like you watch those movies and we would get like i remember we got a little camera and we would like film and it was like that's all we would do it was just like we're gonna go here we're gonna hit street rails like hitting street rails for me was like more accessible than like spending the money on like a, a lift ticket for the day yeah yeah, that's crazy. I feel like too um, that uh, like if somebody's out there, like if you guys are, if the resort is closed, uh, we're not telling you to do it. But yeah, going street street snowboarding it will is an destroy option. Destroy your gear. <laughs> You'll like, destroy. <laughs> like your board. Like I remember as a kid, like we, like I had a 
designated board that was like this was the street like i wouldn't take my good board yeah because it was it is like you're riding down concrete and like on stairs and like i had one board that like i i literally had to wax it every single time because the bottom of it like it just becomes like a cheese grater basically yeah so yeah that is uh don't take your good board to do it yeah (laughs) um awesome uh uh, Rice wants to know, best board for Mount Washington, Vancouver Island Mountain. If you've ever been there, not a whole lot of powder, but I like trees and easy park features. I'm a beginner intermediate. Um, have you ever ridden Mount Washington? No, but I heard they get more snow than we do. Yeah, yeah. Their, like annual snowfall is like insane, but it's like they're on the ocean, so it gets wet there. I think it's super heavy. Um, yeah, man, that's a tough call. Beginner intermediate. For- I might just say the DOA. Yeah, you could Cabot go. to DOA is like, I mean, it's a good board everywhere, but like for there, like you can ri- you ride it. Like. Yeah, yeah, I'd love the DOA. Uh, Mercury. Or, yeah, Mercury. If you want to save some money, you could go down the line, maybe get like a horoscope or something. The one softer. I ride, like the Outer Space Living. Outer Space Living, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's hard to really recommend because I haven't been to that mountain. If, once I once I'm there, I'll I'll get a better idea. Do you find that like one thing I've been learning about snowboarding is that like. It's almost like the mountain that dictates what board you should bring out for that day. Like Whistler is such an aggressive mountain that you almost need like a board to match it. I mean, I do have like, I mean, a lot of us here, we do have multiple boards. Yeah. Cause like, I mean, the board I ride for park, like I love it, which is the outer space living. It's like one of my best favorite boards of all time. Yeah. But riding pow on it, it's a little soft. So you do get it kind of bucked around. So it makes it harder to like charge things when it's like rougher. Would you even say like, uh, cause the, Parks between Whistler and Blackcomb are so different. Um, what's been your like go-to park like in the past, and like what would you ride a different bar, uh, board depending on the park? You're I mean, I guess to? it depends on the type of rider you are too. Yeah. Like I've always kind of been like the rail guy, so I always ride like a softer board. Where like yeah, any of my friends that are jumpers, like they're riding like stiffer boards because they need it. Um, so I think that like for me, it's just because I've always been like the rail person. Yeah. Like I always go for like a, s- a softer board. Yeah, uh, like like is it like. The Mercury is a really good everything board. Same with the DOA. Like, they're a little stiffer. But, I mean, just because having the option to have multiple boards or, like, a, I mean, a lot of people that have, like, a quiver. Like, some people have, like, 10 boards and they have got, like, boards for this, boards for, like, deep days, boards for, like, deep days in the trees. Like, there's there's so many options out there. It's overwhelming. And I guess in skateboarding, like, the board choice is a bit more streamlined. Like, are you just getting a board in skateboarding for, it's like, personal your preference, size? Or? Like, I, like yeah. I mean, it usually comes down to size. Like, okay. a lot of, like, not everyone, but a lot of people that, like, they don't do as many flip tricks. Generally, they get a wider board because it's more stable. And, like, like a lot of, like, I have friends that skate, like, um, like the bowls in transition. And they generally have bigger boards because it's just more service. So they just, like, they can surf it. Um, and where, like, I skate a smaller one because I do more flip tricks. So it's just easier to flip. Okay. But, like, I've got friends that skate huge boards that can do every flip trick as well. So it's personal preference. Cool. But it's kind of like a similar thing where it's like you adapt the board to your, the tricks you kind of get like, you're going for. You go, that's what I want. And you use yeah. kind of that one board for everything. Uh, Bryce says, you remember riding Mount Bachelor? That's my home mountain. Have you ever been down to Mount Bachelor? I haven't. Did you go? Oh, man. Yeah. A couple of years ago. Yeah. No it's, way. it's awesome. Cool. Yeah. It's, uh, I guess it's not, it's a very like surf kind of uh, inspired mountain. Like That's, I, it's in Oregon. It's in right? Oregon. Yeah. There's lots of like big, like wind I, lips. And I think stuff. I was just watching the latest bomb hole. Um, yeah. With, um, why am I forgetting his name? Jake Price. He's like a filmer and that's like his home mountain. And he just says like, he actually talks about how that being his home mountain and how like he actually, his parents got a place in Mammoth when he was a kid and he actually didn't like it cause he like couldn't like ride park and he's like, I just want to get back. And he moved back to Bachelor because he's just like, there's just wind lips. And he's like, you can just surf and like frontside airs. And he's like, that's all I want to do. And for like you were saying, like the mountain does mold yeah. the rider you end up being for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of the riding at Bachelor too, it's it's like a skate bowl. It's like, it can be very flowy and you're kind of pumping things. Um, so what is he saying about GX1000? Oh yeah, go for it. Read it there. Yeah. Kevin says the GX one thousand hoodie is fire. Any recommendation on waist width? We size, just got new GX stuff. Size ten boot, yeah. Waist width, a size ten, you're fine on a regular width. Like I think ten and a half, you're like, you could still get away with it, but eleven plus, you should definitely ride a wide board. Yeah, that's a good call. 
Um, but yeah, you guys got a bunch of GX one thousand. We just got a ton of the new stuff. It looks amazing. It's okay. hard. I did like price it all today, and it's I'm like, oh, I might need to get some. Cool. Um, yeah. What do you think? So just uh, talking about how Bachelor is kind of like has like a flowy skate bowl kind of feel to it. Like, what are the, are some of the strongest skills that you can take from skateboarding over to snowboarding? Like, um, just one that popped into my head was like pumping like features and stuff. Oh, that's like, huge. Yeah, like going through like a roller section and pumping with your snowboard. I actually that must think be... about that. It's funny you say that. I actually think that like when we're doing the bike tracks here. Yeah. And like we're pumping through and I always think about it. I was like, man, like people that, yeah, they don't know how to like pump transition. And I was like, if they were just riding like straight legged, like I was like, it would be one harder on the body and two, like suck up all your speed. Yeah. I do think about it all the time when we rip the bike tracks is how like knowing like that skate background definitely helps you on like pumping and cornering. Yeah, because uh, I haven't, like, skated very very many difficult things where I really need to pump something, like, hard. But I can imagine that, like, if you're coming through something and you, you got some speed, you just got to, like... And you can know how to, like, pump or anti-pump to, like, basically gain or ditch speed. Right, yeah. So that's, like, a, I, yeah, that's a huge skill that comes from skateboarding. Just yeah, making... Like, I, I always feel like I thought of it, like, yeah. anytime I do a bike track, I always think about, like, man, this would be hard if you couldn't, if you didn't skate. Yeah um yeah is there another is there another skill that comes from skateboarding that is just like it's it's almost like some of those skills are hard to learn on a snowboard but if you have that skateboard background like even like an ollie is like really snapping that tail is like you're learning yeah, to like, like that sorry to cut you off yeah but, no go ahead um but i've a lot of times when people start snowboarding they don't like this is when they're getting onto a box or a, a rail it's like they hop with like both their feet to mm -hmm. get on yeah and that can really backfire you because especially i mean if you hop off your toe edge onto a rail and you slip you're just hopping straight to your shins basically and that's not fun and uh yeah if you gotta learn to like ollie to do it but i mean i've got friends that like i've got friends that are really good skateboarders and like yeah. they think 50 50 on a rail on a snowboard is like insane and i'm like okay. what? but like that's all you do and it's kind of the same but there's still going to be like a transition for yeah you. But yeah, that's a that's a good one. Yeah, if you guys, if I think like yeah, skateboarding, it's it's really gonna going to unlock like skills and uh, skateboarding is gonna unlock skills in snowboarding for sure. Like, um, yeah, pumping stuff and because it's so much harder too in skateboarding. Like, you're rolling through something, you gotta like bend your knees, like suck up to like avoid like your board going shooting out from underneath you. And it's probably things that like you may not realize it at the time, yeah. but then it'll transfer over. Like, I mean, like like i mean board sliding on both versus like like with a skateboard like when you do a board slide like your only option is to be like in the middle of the board right and like on a snowboard if you board slide and you're not in the middle of the board it makes it harder to like stay on because your weight is to one side where like as if it's in the middle if you if you skateboard you go all right i'm gonna board slide on my snowboard like you do in a skateboard you get right in the middle it makes it way easier because it'll feel the same wow um John kind of mentioned this before to me earlier, but is there, when you watch somebody snowboarding, can you really see like uh, somebody that has the oh, skateboard background? For sure. And it kind of like, just for the, that reason, what I just said is like, they know how things are to be done. Yeah. Cause they know, cause I mean, basically all the snowboard tricks do come from skateboarding. So there is, I mean, I know people, this is a, I mean, it's personal preference, but it's like, I mean, with a method, like some people I know are just like, when you grab method, they're like, you have to grab between the bindings because that's how it's done on a skateboard. Like right. you can't do it. Like people aren't really doing it on the nose, like how some people do in a snowboard, but it's just like, that's just personal prefer, like what people like. But I think it's better between the bindings. And I kind of think the same thing is like, there's just certain tricks like that. Yeah. Like this is what it, it's, this is where it comes from. So this is how it should be done. Yeah. But I mean, there are no rules. I guess too, just like, just watching, like, I know that, um, watching snowboard videos helps but watching i found myself watching skateboard videos and watching the skate style and like how people do tricks and then transferring it over to snowboarding too it's, i noticed it like one of my yeah. one of my friends my roommate he's really good at like he does front blunts on his snowboard like on stalls yeah and like he like every time he does it you're just like that looks like how you would do it on a skateboard like you're like it looks perfect it's awesome yeah um good question here um oh so cullen wants to know thoughts on downhill mountain biking john or kev um it's pretty badass i mean it's yeah for, i don't do it yeah but i mean i've done some trail riding it's a lot of fun like i got no hate on that world yeah. and it's like nuts how fast they go i feel like it's it's we probably don't do it for the same reason it's like when 
I don't want to get hurt, s- dude. They yeah. get so owned. Like, <laughs> I know. I, like, it's a, such high consequence that if I were to get hurt high speed, mountain biking. High consequence it is. Yeah. Then I can. Respect to the gnarly people yeah, out there. It's almost like when you're already taking a risk, um, snowboarding and skateboarding, you don't want to th- throw in like a third thing to get hurt on. Yeah. And I mean, um, even just, like I talk about all the time, like, like people just do so many things and like, that's awesome. But like for me, I'm like, I skate, I snowboard. Like I like to go fishing sometimes. Right. But like, even, <laughs> but like even for me like like for example like i love fishing i don't do it like as much as i would like to do it because i'm like i can't justify like not skating yeah and the same with like i'm just like i just i got these things i like and i already don't have enough time to do these things i don't need more things to take up more of my time like yeah for sure um yeah like i've i spent one summer mountain biking and like uh i didn't get hurt but there was so many close calls that the next the next summer, I was like, oh, "How do I just I do you want to get into dirt biking?" Though I think that'd be sick. oh man, yeah, that's you watch, that's there's, risky too. There was this guy Axel Hodges, yeah, and like yeah, you just follow him on Instagram, and you're just like you in your head, you're just like I just want to do that, and you're just that you know like, I mean the level he rides at, you're just like it's just, he does the most simple things that are so hard, and like it's the same thing you can get like a buddy of mine, he's like yeah I broke my back, I'm like what how? He's like I just flew off this thing, I was like, this, oh, damn. yeah, it's scary. Um, do you have any advice for like if somebody's a brand new skateboarder showing up to a park for the first time? Uh, I know like from my my own experience, it's pretty intimidating. Do you have any advice for somebody turning up to a skate park for the first time? It's definitely intimidating. Like I mean, I remember as a kid, like it's definitely different between when I was a kid and now. But I was so intimidated at the park, like I didn't go. Right. My mom like dropped me off. Yeah. And I like didn't go. Like I would just like I like, hung in a parking lot because I was like. I was so scared and like I don't think I started going to the park until I felt like I was like good enough that like if like you know that at least people wouldn't be like I was that like I just felt like oh I can prove myself but I mean nowadays it's not like that like I think it's just like I mean be cool like that's it like I mean here in Whistler like there's so many little kids at the park and like some of them are just like the coolest kids and like it's like it's so funny because you're just like the age difference like I'm hanging out with these kids at the park that are like 10 years old and they're like yeah it doesn't even matter like they're just cool and i think that's just it it's like if you're just cool and you just kind of realize like oh how this is how the park works and you know when to go when not to go and it's just thinking if you just if you're just like that cool little kid people aren't gonna mind if you're there and they'll like go out of their way to like yo tell people to watch out because you're trying to do your thing even if you're like a cool 35 year old just yeah, trying I'm, to i mean i think that's what i am i, <laughs> I mean like uh if somebody shows up and they're they're a bit older like i guess it's like yeah you kind of have to like read the park know where maybe to avoid if there's like a, a like a, a busy lane and if you're like you know going slow there's there's definitely like pockets of the park that i find where you can kind of just go a bit slower work on some snake run like i mean here like i feel like yeah. a lot of the people they all hang they got their own world over there like, and it's funny like i'll go over there and it's like people are like what are you doing over here and i'm like yeah i'm out of my place <laughs> oh do you mean the uh there, there's guys that ride the skate bowl like purely yeah like they the it's bowl? funny there's there's like there's yeah. people there that don't come to our side and there's people yeah. on our side and there's not there's like no beef between the two yeah it's just like they're different worlds and you're like i don't do that and they don't do this and it's fine <laughs> It's kind of like in the middle. That's where the beginners hang out between the snake. It is kind and... of true. Like, that's true. <laughs> that's where I. They're figuring out which side they'll go. Yeah, yeah, I'm usually just right in the middle. Just I kind of go over towards the snake, and then I go over towards the ramps, and then I'm, I'm like, yeah, I'm stuck. I'll we'll go early, the early mornings where there's no one there, and then oh, kind of yeah. like, yeah, like that's what a lot of people I know like. I got some friends like that are girls, and like they they're into skating and they want to get more into it, so they just go in the mornings when it's like way less intimidating and there's not people ripping around, so they're just like. They don't feel like they're in the way and they also don't you know it's they're not gonna get hit yeah that's probably the biggest one is like go early when when nobody's there uh the worst uh skate park experience i had was i arrived just as school was getting out and there was like 50 it's like in the summer when there's yeah when there's <laughs> no school there's definitely times of the day where you're like yeah there's like a two hour window of just yeah. like it is like hectic and it's yeah. another just like you just sit down sometimes or yeah, so er- I feel like if you get the you get the timing right, like early is probably yeah the best time to go is when there's not a lot of people there. Did you see a question that you like? I, I just saw you said David B. David B. Is it the fifty six? Did he just buy the fifty six? Says hey John, I bought a yes standard yeah. online last night from the circle. It probably Thanks, was dude. Fifty six. I remember like nice pulling it today. Oh cool. I handpicked that board specifically for you. 
Um, yeah, guys, I'll put a link too in the description to the Circles website after this if you want to check out their shop, check out uh, skateboards, snowboard, snowboards, they got it all. Hit us up. Um, Neil, are you doing rails on a snowboard a similar feeling to doing rails on a skateboard or do you feel more slide on a snowboard? I'd say they're pretty similar. Okay. Like depending on the feature or whatever, but I mean like for me, I wax everything at the park, so I like I like everything okay. to be like super slippery. But nice. either way, you don't want it to be sticky because it's not going to end well. So when you get on a, I've never done a um, a board slide on a skateboard. So when you get on sideways, it just like it slides. It can, it's but like it's like, I mean like we get a lot of rain. Not a lot. Of, we do get a lot of rain here, but like I wax everything. Like there's times you go to board slide something and it's just like so sticky, and then you just wax it, and then it's like ultra slippery, which okay. I prefer. Yep. Okay. Um, and it, it's similar to snowboarding too. Sometimes you hop on sideways to like a tube or something. And yeah, it's it, rusty and it's. I like actually noticed that yesterday. Down. There's like the triple down rail, and like I rolled in, I got fifty fifty it, and my buddy's like, he's like, "Yo, it feels sticky." I just tried a board side, and I was like, "It actually felt sticky on a fifty fifty. Like you just feel that it's like slower." Yeah. But and it's just like it was cold. Like you notice that too when it's really cold. Like yeah. the snow is sticky, the rails are sticky. Yeah. So they both kind of like vary a bit, I guess. Yeah. Uh, Patrick H with the super chat says, can I use a regular hiking backpack uh, that kind of has a little bit of a frame for snowboarding or should I buy one that's dedicated for snowboarding? Uh, Patrick, it kind of depends on what you want to do. Um, you probably don't need a frame, like a proper hiking frame backpack. But um, if you're just doing like bringing stuff up, any, any backpack will do for snowboarding. Uh, but if you want to get into proper hikes, um, a backpack that has like the snowboard like carry straps. Uh, look out for those. So, do you guys have snowboard backpacks here? Yeah, we got like the Burton AK bags. Okay. I think, I mean, for snowboarding, I mean, like it depends on size, but I agree with what Kevin said. But I think the chest straps are huge. It's like if you're snowboarding and it's like flopping around, it's yeah. not fun. Yeah, the chest, the chest strap, also like the waist strap um, takes the weight off your shoulders. But I think the biggest one is having that like snowboard carry, like the straps at the back that you can s strap your snowboard into. Like you definitely want to have that if you're if you're doing hikes. Um, if you're just having a backpack for casual, then you can kind of get any backpack really. Um, all right, and th I guess there's like a, a lot of companies too that are snowboard and make snowboard and skateboards. Like uh, Arbor, Arbor makes a lot of skateboards as well. They do. I think they're. Um, what other? I think they may be the only one that actually does that. They're more like the longboard cruiser okay. world, but I think I, I wouldn't be surprised if... Actually, they come from that. I'm pretty sure they started there and then they made snowboards. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised there's not more snowboard... Or like, vice versa. What about... the LibTech make skateboards? LibTech actually does. Like, it's like they're not that big, but they do have, like, a team and, like, their team rips. Is it hard... Is it hard for a snowboard company to break into skateboarding? Is that, like, kind of a hard thing to do? Maybe. I think it's just like they don't want to... They just focus on one thing rather than having it. Right. Like, I mean, there's a lot going on, so it's like this. I always think it's cool when brands just go, "Oh, this is what we do. And we're gonna do this. And we're gonna do it to the best we can." Okay. Like if a skateboard company was like, "All right, we're gonna start doing snowboards now." Santa Cruz too. That's true. Oh, Santa They're Cruz. actually one of the more legit ones for sure. Yeah. Is it kind of a frowned upon thing though to like start expanding past skateboarding? I think it depends on who you are. Like okay. if you were like really cool, people might yeah. be like, "Oh, no way." Yeah. But if like. I mean, we won't name people, but there's certain, <laughs> there's certain brands that you'd be like, yeah, I'm not going to buy that skateboard. But Right. Okay. Yeah. It's uh, yeah, it's interesting. Uh, Capita kind of makes decks. I think they don't, like, they just make them for, like, cool stuff, wall art. But, like, you can definitely skate them. Right. I feel like, yeah, it's the kind of thing where you might have a snowboard company make, like, promo decks. Like, they'll get, like, a, yeah, exactly. another company yeah. to make them. Um, Harry says, what about Braille? Yeah, what about Braille? Braille is, must be the biggest YouTube channel They're for like, skateboarding. Probably they're like they're basically like exist only online. Yeah. Like yeah. I've never seen. I actually don't think. I don't know if they if they, it's their choice, but no shop carries Braille basically. So yeah, they're they're just a pure online. Uh, they have their own there. whole world going on. Oh yeah, and then Santa Cruz makes bikes as well. I and guess they, they make really good bikes actually. Yeah. And I've told like they're like I think they're like the best bikes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because over in Europe, I, I noticed like massive stores like Santa Cruz stores that are that are just bikes. Yeah. Um, Mohammed says I'm from Saudi Arabia and I can't travel now because of the pandemic. Can I use my snowboard in sandboarding and how? 
I don't uh, know. I've never sandboarded. Muhammad, but, that's an awesome question. Have you sandboarded before? No, never. I need to get over to Saudi Arabia, though. That'd be I heard fun. It's so hot there. Um, <laughs> Crazy hot. Um, I've seen people do it. Actually, I have some friends that did it in, I think they were in Dubai. And what they said was that sandboarding was very anticlimactic. Like, I think the sand actually just slows you down. So no matter the pitch of the sand, you're going kind of slow. You're not going as slow as you'd like. I just couldn't imagine, like, just getting sand in everything. Like, to be sand, you would be finding sand for, like, a week after. Yeah, that's... Uh, <laughs> sand, yeah, in everything. Yeah, Muhammad, I would recommend, um, instead of sandboarding, I don't think it really translates well. I feel like if you can skateboard... Um, or I don't know if, if in Saudi Arabia, do you guys have like those, um, like wave, um, uh, like wave centers where like they train or, surf I mean, waves? You could, I'm sure you could skate there. I don't see why not. Yeah. I would definitely it's look dry. into, look into skateboarding. I don't know. Yeah. What's the skate scene like in Saudi Arabia? Yeah. Let us know. Yeah. Let us know, man. Um, uh, it's so cool. Yeah. For everyone watching too, let us know where you guys are watching from. That's like one of the best, uh, parts is everyone coming together. Um, thoughts on never summer boards. Um, I've I, actually never ridden a never summer snowboard. I heard the quality of them is really good. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to, uh, yeah, everyone down in Colorado, Colorado company. So, um, uh, they've been getting some good snow recently. Um, did you see how like in Tahoe they got like eight feet of snow or like Did six? they just recently? I think the over, like when we were getting our snow here, they, yeah. they got like eight feet. Damn. I'm going to message my buddies. I got friends out there. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Yeah. Um, uh, Lil Cheddar, Cheddar saying, watching from Florida, I snowboard three days a year in, in Colorado, trying to move out there. Nice. I've well, been to Florida. I skated there. Oh, actually. nice. It's yeah. It's very humid, but it's, it's awesome. It was like, Florida's pretty cool. Sick. Some, some place you can skateboard all year round and, and surf. Um, Biko, what do you do with the extra boards you buy to test out and make videos on? Um, I try to normally like give them away or if like a buddy's wants to buy a board, I, I'll probably like sell it for like really cheap. Um, but yeah, try, I've actually got too many boards. I, need well, I to... wish we were coming to Minnesota. Yeah. Have you ever been there? No, but I got a lot of friends there. Shout uh, out to 1817. Nice. Um, yeah, it's crazy too. Like in the like East coast or Midwest, the level of snowboarders who are just on like the tow ropes like getting those yeah minnesota like, like the the uh resort there highland okay like there's like tommy gesney comes from there like there's like like so many of my favorite snowboarders come from there like it's crazy the, the small the small hills just like breed some really good kids i guess that's kind of the closest thing too to a skate park as well we just have the tow rope where you actually you never even unstrap you no, just they, ride they probably don't yeah so that's like um yeah, shout out to all those Midwest kids, everyone on the East Coast who are just like riding that tow rope, and that's like the ultimate, like just focused on nailing tricks, yeah, like so that's lap like after progression. Lap. Um, Evan says use a hit Alpine Valley in Michigan with Kyle Mack. Kyle oh, Mack is good. Very cool. Um, Black Box, I have my first rail jam. USASA competition coming up. So do you guys have any tips on what to do or mindset to have? I mean, uh. be relaxed. Try not to stress and just, yeah, do your thing. But I think like just low, like low stress is gonna be, I think will help you the most. If you just feel comfortable, you'll be able to like do the tricks you're able to do. How do you get in that low stress like mindset? What do you think? I mean, I listen to music. I just like, oh, I yeah. love, like I always listen to music when I snowboard, like it's, like I, oh, I'm still like I forgot my phone one day and I just didn't go. Like, that, like <laughs> one of my friends were like, "You don't need music." I was like, "I don't just they make like I don't know." I you feel it when you're riding like yeah. the song, like the vibe, like it's like you get into it and you're like, it's the, there's nothing better. Nice. But I'm not so much on pow days though. You got to hear people. Yeah. What do you uh, What do you listen to? What's like, I mean a lot of everything. A lot of trap. I feel like that just like trap. Motiv yeah, that's okay, like yeah. motivates me like hip hop. But I mean, there's definitely a little bit of everything like. Hit me up. I'll send you my my park playlist. I will actually send it to you. <laughs> do you like uh, Do you like Action Bronson? Do you listen some to of his stuff? Okay. Good. Yeah, yeah, like it's like for me, it's like a good song is a good song. But yeah, I definitely have some like like that, like a lot of trap. But there's some definitely songs on my playlist that people are like, why do you have this on here? And I like being like able to explain them. Like this is actually why because I heard it here. And it, like 
yeah. the vibe from when I first heard it is makes me feel that. It is funny how like a certain song, no matter what the song is, kind of like brings you back to that but feeling. That moment. Yeah. It's yeah. It, that's the best. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and uh, have you ever done a real jam, skate or snowboard? I when I was younger, I used to like we used to do them like there used to be like in my low like there used to be forum young blood contest and like it was like uh, so in ontario there's like a lot there was a lot of those things where you do like rail like rail jams and little park contests uh colin saying john it's hard to say santa cruz is the best so many companies have advanced tech and use the same parts i personally think scott and nuke proof have the best downhill bikes uh check out nico vink oh that's like more i won't argue with you because i don't bike so yeah, I thought you. Were, I thought you were going with a skateboard snowboard angle. Like we don't really know anything about mountain bikes. I don't. Mountain biking is so technical too. There's it's, like there's some each... crazy stuff. Like I have some like so I have some friends that are like pro bikers, and yeah, like I've seen the bikes that they ride, and they're like over ten grand. Like it's like insane yeah, how much yeah. people spend on bikes. Uh, Amelia says, "Hey there, thank you so much for the vids. Trying to learn how to ollie on my skateboard, and every time I pop, the board goes to my left." And I can't get, and I can't land with both feet on it. Any tips? I mean, it's you just gotta try over and over and over again. And I mean, it's easy too. Like you were saying before, like you can YouTube anything, but it is just one of the things. Like I swear, like when I was a kid, that it, like I wouldn't even. I swear, I remember it taking like a year. Like, <laughs> yeah. It took so long, and then yeah. just like one day, you're like, it like it's the same that we mentioned before. Like one day, it just clicks, and then it's like it's on from then. Yeah. It's like uh, dropping in on a skateboard into like a, what are they called? Like the quarter pipe. Um, the first time I ever did that, it was just like, well, I probably, I failed like four or five times on just like the tiniest one. And then once you get it on a small one and then you get a little bit bigger. You're going to see that like, year, like in the summer, is like all, because we have like so many levels of the quarter pipes and you see the kids that are like yeah. so small, they're dropping like the biggest, but it's like they start small and they get, and they just keep working their way up. And it's like, cool because everyone's like there supporting like you got it and like yep yeah it's awesome um but yeah just doing like check out some tutorials uh maybe like braille i know like uh that aaron Cairo dude he has so many great tutorials on how to how to ollie and um and do all kinds of tricks but yeah just the repetitiveness of, of trying it will you'll figure it out um Neil wants to know, is there a snowboard manufacturing shortage right now? Seems like a lot of snowboards are out of stock. Yeah, what's uh, do you have any be behind the scenes knowledge on that? I don't know if there's a shortage, but I mean, depending on your area, I heard that a lot of shops canceled a lot of product just due to the whole COVID thing. They were kind of scared of like, are we gonna be able to sell this stuff? I yeah. mean, especially like, I mean, Ontario, the East Coast are definitely struggling right now because the hills are closing. But I wouldn't say it's a shortage. I would say it's more the opposite, where more people are wanting to be outside. So people are like selling or buying more of everything because they're just like, all they want to do is be outside. Did you notice that last summer? Like, skateboarding was. Skateboarding sales were up? Crazy how yeah. affected it was. Like, COVID okay. hit the skate world. Like, it was like panics to order stuff. Like, it would be like drop dates of like, okay, tomorrow, 11 o'clock, this is there. And you'd be like setting alarms to like get the stuff. That may be like one of the benefits of the last year is like more people like putting an emphasis on like outdoor, like things to do, I heard, skateboarding, biking. I heard it was across the I heard biking was like, you can't get bike anything. People are like, can't even buy pedals. Like the whole bike world was like sold out of everything. Yeah. If I had a house, I'd be putting in an indoor swimming pool or like a backyard swimming pool just in case there was another yeah. lockdown. I'll be just like, all right, I'll be chilling out my pool. Yeah, and like, poolside. Get a little like skateboard ramp going yeah. back there. Never have to leave. I mean, for me, it's like, I've always make the joke that I've been quarantining for years. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I skate, I snowboard, I go home, I play Call of Duty. I'm like, things like that. And I'm like, I'm good. I'm like, that's what I've, I've already do those things. That's fine. What do you think about how in California they were dumping the sand into the skate parks? That's excessive. That's excessive. Like, I saw that and I'm like, that's nuts. Like, yeah. But I mean, it just depends. Like, I don't know. People just got to not do the things they're not supposed to do. Like, you can figure it out. Like, we figured it out. Yeah. Yeah, what was it like? Was the skate park pretty empty? Or they did, did close the park here for a little bit. Like, there were signs, closed, and they would yeah. have the Muni there, like, patrolling that you wouldn't skate. And, like, but okay. we would still go. We would go, we'd skate, and you'd be there for, like, 15 minutes sometimes. You'd get kicked out, and we're like, like, yeah. Like, I mean, I'm not promoting doing things you're not supposed to do. Right. But we figured it out. Like, okay, Muni's there till 5. Like, okay, we're going to go there after 5. And, like, we would just, like, and it's not, like, a ton of people, but 
that's just the kind of people like with I mean the kind of person I am with skating and snowboarding is like I want to do it and like that's all I want to do nice yeah um I do play Warzone. <laughs> <laughs> What's Warzone? It's like a, it's a game within Call of Duty. Okay. <laughs> uh, and Neil's saying definitely notice my sh local shop with less inventory. Yeah, I think like because of the last year, I feel like people are probably you know carrying less debt or like investing. It's just a scary bit for less. shops. Like yeah, I mean like the amount of dollars that go out as far as like pre-ordering all this gear, and it's like if you're worried that like your local resort's gonna close it's like that's scary because like you buy that stuff like you owe that money yeah so it's that's what it's, shops are just protecting them like if they want to stay in business they can't be like you know have a huge debt and no way to pay that debt back because people aren't snowboarding because they can't in their area yeah i have noticed just like in my friend circle or just people like from snowboard pro camp you guys telling me is that people are still buying quite a lot of snowboards like oh for sure and especially like yeah it's in the split board world it's like oh yeah everyone's doing that because i think they're scared that their local resort is going to shut down and they want to still be able to get out there um anthony wants to know have you either tried the huck knife or huck knife pro um, I rode the Huck Knife one season. It's kind of like a good intermediate, I would say it's like an intermediate park board. Um, but yeah, I haven't ridden it in maybe like five years. Uh, Joel says, how would one go about getting Adidas boots in Australia? Order from us, we'll mail them to you. Oh, really? You <laughs> for, will? For sure. We got you. <laughs> um, you may take a month to get there, it's though. It's true. It like might it, actually it, go by ship. It takes a little while, yeah. but you'll get them. Um, yeah, how many how many pairs do you have left of the Adidas Lexicon? I mean, a decent amount, but okay. we are going through them pretty quick because okay. I mean, it the boot is amazing. Nice. I'm kind of getting worried because you stock up. Like at the end of the season, I feel like I'm gonna need a second pair for the summer. I guess especially if you're going so, somewhere in the summer. So maybe I'll 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 grab a what pair of guys. You guys? Oakley Line Miners or Anon M3s, Dragon NFX twos. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Or PVX. Um, Oakley Line Miners or Anon M3s? Uh, what do I have? Do I have the M4s? Line Miners are pretty You have M3s. Yeah. yeah. Or do I have the M4s? Is M M4s is a thing, right? I'm getting confused. Or you have M4s. Yeah. I have M4s. Yeah. I would say that's a tough call. Like I, I, I think if you, for me, the M4s are awesome because well, you're saying M3s. Um, the Line Miners have a little bit bigger field of, of, of view so but the quick lens change is pretty awesome yeah and you get the mask too yeah you do get two lenses with the anon m3s yeah and the mask so man it's a it's a trade-off you gotta you you decide <laughs> uh tibor says uh tips on how to send my front uh front side three off a bigger kicker rather than doing it comfortably on a small kicker you kind of just it's one of the things you like be comfortable with straight airing that bigger jump but it's it's the same as any trick. Like you just kind of gotta go for it. You gotta get that first one out of the way, because that's what I think it is. It's once you once you feel it. Like once it's just like you, you're like oh. Mm -hmm. Like I say, even if you don't make that one, just like you just gotta like basically just feel like okay, that's what that's like. And once you're like oh, it's not so bad, then you just keep going more and more. Yeah, and and definitely get in the front side 180 first too. If you yeah, can, you just yeah. did the videos on that. Yeah, yeah. And then but the thing that happened with my, when I went from 180 to, th to three, it was like my first three attempts, I was like um, tail heavy. So I landed on my tail, kind of slid out. And then for the next one, I was just like, okay, just got to be a bit more level. Um, but yeah, like John was saying, that first one, you get it out of the way, you learn something. It's, it is scary you, though. You I mean, like, I still, there are certain things that I'm not good at. I mean, jumping is a good example. Like, I've just never been a jumper, so it is, like, for me, it's, like, I feel you. Uh, S. Gordon says, John, do you have any tips on backside feebles? Feeble is the one trick I've never been able to do. I don't know what it is, but, I mean... I've never heard of a feeble. It's, it's like a 50, but over, like, okay. on. It's like a pinch. It's crazy, because I know people that, like, are so good at them, and they just say, it's like doing a board slide. I'm like, it's not like doing a board slide. I can board slide, but... I don't know. It's just, it, it, you just got to go. Like, it's say for me, like, I'm not good at Smith grinds. I don't know what it is. I just, like, I always just make the joke that I'm like a nose guy. I'm like, if it's on the nose, I'm like, I got you. <laughs> nice. Uh, Ryan wants to know, does your store ship free in Canada? I think it's free in BC, but I think it's still, like, the shipping costs are low in Canada. 
You know what's crazy? Because I ship the beanies, it's actually more expensive to, to ship stuff within Canada than it is to the U.S. Have you guys noticed that? I've, and Canada is just the way we mail. Like I've heard it's like, say it's like a hundred bucks to ship something from here to England. I heard it's like 50 bucks to ship it from England to here. Like it's like right. just the way we do things here. Yeah. Like, and if you, if you, if I send something to Vancouver, it's more expensive to send it to Vancouver than it is to send it to Seattle. Than to drive and drop it off. <laughs> <laughs> Less than gas. Um, uh, do you know anything about Burton off axis snow, uh, off axis snowboard? What is the Burton off-axis snowboard? I've heard of it, but I'm not too familiar. Okay. It's hard to keep up with, I mean, every model. Yeah, I don't know that one. Um, do, you know, do you mean the ASIM, an ASIM board or off-axis? Okay, so Nick says there is a border charge of $50 sometimes. Um, we get the same. When I order things from the U.S., we get it too. Yeah, you got to pay the, the tariffs. All right. Uh, Kevin says, how do I find people that ride, that ride? None of my friends ride, and I've only been able to go by myself. Um, yeah, what about skateboarding? I feel like, is skateboarding, is it easier to find, like, a crew because everyone's in the same spot? I think it's just, like, you go. Like, you just keep yeah. going and going and going, and then, like, you people see you, and they're like, oh, yeah, I see you all the time. I think that's just where it starts is, like, if you're just consistently there, yeah, you'll see the same people, and then you can just end up talking to them. Yeah, and then same as snowboarding, you end up, like for me, I find I meet people just like sitting on the chair. And if you, you know, you're both singles and then you say like, hey, like, you know, where are you riding today? And then if somebody's doing the same thing as you, you're just like, oh, like, you want to, you want to go riding. So it's kind of something that just can happen organically. Uh, Jackson says, have you ever ridden the evil twin? What are, what are your thoughts? If so. John, what are your thoughts on battalion points? I mean, we were. Uh, <laughs> they make good stuff. I mean, I'm not here to hate. But yeah, yeah. It's weird. It's, it's very Euro. That's always what I say. I'm it's like, very it's Euro. For, I always say battalions yeah. for Euros. Um, for me, like, I feel like the Evil Twin feels like uh, I, I read it. I wrote it two, maybe like 18 months ago, and it felt like too loose. So it's, TJ rides battalions a lot. TJ like rides them a lot. TJ loves the Evil Twin, but I think this year he went with a stiffer battalion board. So I feel like with the battalion and the three BT, it's uh, it's a cool thing, but you then have to like I think change the stiffness of your board because it creates like a more loose feeling. So if you then get it like a stiffer park board, um, it can kind of like even it out. So I'm stoked to try out another battalion, but I would definitely go stiffer than the Evil Twin. Um, uh, Joel says, what are your thoughts on the dinosaurs will die wizard stick? It's like a perfect everything board. Like it's camera to rocker. Um, I actually sold one today. Oh, but sick. yeah, like it is like one, it's one of our best selling boards. It's probably Dino's best selling board. But yeah, if you're looking for it, like it's right in the middle, it's not super stiff. It's not soft and it will do everything. All right, let's do, a, let's do a couple more questions, and then we're going to get it out of here. But Colin says, do you ever shave your beard clean? Uh, never. I don't think I've shaved in, like, like five years or I'm more. I'm the same. Like, I mean, yeah. like, that's, like, as long as I would get. But I, like, I yeah. don't, like, I just use an electric one just, like, trim it. I mean, it's shaving every day. Yeah. It's a lot. I mean, like, I think it's a lot of waste. I mean, I'm, like. It's a lot of wa I mean, wasted like, time. Like, <laughs> wasted time, wasted razor blades. Like, it's, like, yeah. Man. I mean, depending on the blades you're getting, you're getting mock blades. They're, like. You ever looked at the price of like how much those mock blades cost? It's like yeah. 30 bucks for four or something oh, yeah. insane. I feel like if I live somewhere hot, like if I was living in Hawaii, I'd probably shave just because, you know, you got the humidity. It's like making your skin all moist. Maybe odd time I'll do it. Like I trim pretty short. Yeah. I love that we're like off topic, but these are the best topics. <laughs> yeah. But then, yeah, the one time you're like, I'm going to shave with a razor. And then as soon as you do it, you're like, oh, this is a horrible idea. Yeah. You I get see your face. You're like, this is weird. Yeah. Because in the cold, too, it's all like just like crackly and itchy and like your skin gets dry. Some of these questions are amazing. Like, <laughs> how do you find dates in this town? Oh. Uh, yeah. What, what do, you, do you have any dating, dating, advice, dating for advice for a ski town? I don't know. Be you. It's hard for me. I mean, honestly... I love this is like I just love that we're so sidetracked but um, <laughs> I mean I don't drink so I mean that does make it harder because everyone drinks and it's pretty easy to it's easier to meet people when you're out but I mean luckily for me I like work here so it's like I have a very social job which just makes it easy to meet people in here oh there you go yeah I fine. think that I think it, like I think about time I was like if you were like 
if you were if you were me and you had an office job, you'd be impossible to meet people. Yeah. My first like few years of doing the channel, like I was a hermit, just like I was either on the mountain filming or I was at home editing and like I had no friends. Um, luckily I met my wife, but yeah, my now girlfriend we've married. Then, yeah. But <laughs> luckily I met somebody before that or else I would have been well still a hermit. It was like three years of like hermit life, like yeah. But it's it's tough. So yeah, maybe get a job that's social. Social jobs for sure. Um, or like hobbies that are social too, like a skate park. You yeah, exactly. Meet, some, meet a girl at the skate park, but that could be tough too, because like I, I imagine, is there is there creepers at the skate park, kind of like trying to pick up girls and stuff, or is that? I mean, it's a pretty. Not, not really. No? I, I do okay. feel for the girls. Like I always think about that. I mean, girls in general in those situations where they're like male dominant, and how I mean, I was I was talking the other day, but like Jim things like that where it's like i'm like it's got to be weird knowing that everyone's looking yeah what's like a thing that i guess it's like for a guy going to like a yoga class yeah I, that would be exactly it like it's, you're the only guy in the yoga class and maybe yeah maybe it's the opposite you're like oh they're all looking at me yeah what's, maybe yeah could be like what's he doing here Get yeah I mean, <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm out of my element but i'm getting into it nice I'm doing a 40-day yoga challenge and i'm so close to being done sick like eight more days left eight more days yeah and that's probably one of the best things for like we're like why do you do it why do you do yoga what's the benefits i mean flexibility is huge i mean yeah. like just being less sore like that's yeah. a big one it's just like you get to st like stretching in general like and like i'm doing this 40-day challenge and it's awesome but i still don't feel like i do it enough like but i you notice a difference in just being able to grab your board just the littlest things or even like taking a slam and like your recovery like i feel like i feel like i take definitely take some good slams and like like you just you do it and you're like what you get out and you're like oh i'm not hurt yeah it's nice if you're more flexible that you'll definitely notice where you're not gonna like tear things and you just but overall like you just feel better yeah i think like snowboarding skateboarding like flexibility is like so underrated you need to have it for like yeah grabs because I used to do a lot of yoga. Your I've wife, been, she does. She did trucks. She's right? uh, and yeah, kind of like an ex yoga instructor. But uh, it's a uh, you got to be committed. Like yeah, doing the challenge is awesome. Like I need the excuse to to do it. I should just go home right now. And it was literally like for me, like like I do I do it every once in a while. But it was like my friends, like two of my friends. Yeah. Um, they just basically I just ha I happened to Facetime them on like the first, being like Happy New Year, and they're like We're doing a forty day yoga challenge. You have to do it. And I was like. Like it was like I, it's like I felt like I had no choice. I'm like, all right, say I won't, and I'm just like, that, like that's what it is for me. Is it's like, I'm like, oh, you like, I just want to do it to be like, there, I did it. Like, that is that, and for me, that's like a lot of things with motivations. Like, I want to learn things just to be like, there. Like I, it's, it, you do feel like accomplished when you're like, yeah. getting over those humps, doing things you haven't done. Like the, that feeling is like, pretty amazing. Like it's pretty cool to think that I'm like, at day like four or like what I'm at thirty three. I'm like, I'm actually going to do this, like, 40 days of yoga. And for a second, I was like, do I do 100? Like, I don't, I don't think I want to do 100. I need, like, I'm like, I do love doing it, but I'm dying to not do it for one day. Yeah. Have you felt the difference in your riding? I did it. I think the other day I did, like, I did a grab. And I was like, it just felt like it wasn't like a such a, a reach. I just, yeah. like, did it. And I was like, that was kind of cool. Yeah. The days when I like go to do a grab and it feels like a, a reach and I'm I'm feeling Yeah, you feel it. Like for sure. uh then I'm like I need to what get was, some yoga going again. Was one question. Something about a morning routine. I want to see what it was. Oh, there we go. JR. JR says, "What's your morning routine before riding?" I'm it's funny for me like the way I like I swear I wake up at 8. Like I'm like, "I'm going to go riding." I wake up at 8. I don't leave my house for like till like 10 30 but i i usually wake up i usually have a good breakfast like i usually make i'm making these crazy like um like breakfast bagels that are just like crazy nice. or i just like granola and stuff like that nice. um but i usually end up just watching snowboarding like that's why it takes me so long <laughs> is that like i just get stuck in a youtube trap of just like watching snowboarding and then i just get like really hyped and then i'm like all right we gotta go now um but that's usually it. i just wake up eat i like to eat i usually drink tea um you yeah yeah usually i just have like a way too much tea i drink like a liter of tea and then i have to pee 10 times before i get to the hill but yeah that's it good breakfast tea watch some snowboarding and then i go nice my routine is usually um i'll have like a coffee and then i'll come to the village grab something like breakfast kind of on the way 
and then eat that on the gondola. That is nice. Like, um, like I was like having a tea or something in the gondola is really nice. Yeah, I feel like I did, uh, I'm trying to like have the routine more of like get up and just like go because I used to do the same thing. I'd like, you know, hang out, watch videos. Uh, but now you can just like watch your like snowboard videos on your phone, so on the chairlift. You can do that. Sometimes it's like, uh, sometimes you just feel you're just like, you'll be on the gondola and you're like, oh, it's really, it, comes, it goes into your head. You're like, I just want to watch this right now. Yeah. Thanks technology. Um, let's do uh, let's do one more question. Um, are those thermoses big in the snow? What are you talking about there? Thermoses? Is it thermoses? Uh, Paul's saying this is awesome stream. Thanks for doing this, guys. Yeah, no worries. Paul, Thanks for man. having us. Yeah. Uh, you should go to Fernie. Have you been to Fernie? Like, like Al Fernie? Uh, no. no I'm like <laughs> Have you been to any other resorts in BC? I actually haven't. I'm like, oh, yeah. I should, but I'm just like so content. Like, I love it. Like, Whistler, I'm not gonna lie. Whistler makes it real hard to leave. I feel like John, too, is like, he's more down for a skate trip than a snowboard That kind of, yeah. I mean, lugging, like, that's a lot of stuff to lug around for sure. Yeah. Um, uh, 250 waist width, too small for a size 10. Uh, I don't know. I'm not like down that much on the numbers. Yeah. That I mean, would, like it's 250 millimeter waist width. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Like it is that, but I'm just trying to think, but I feel like it's like, honestly, if it's regular weight, like if it's like, cause I always like 26 plus is considered wide. So I mean, that's millimeters, but I yeah. feel like tens are fine. Like yeah. I've even had friends that have like 11 and 11 and a half that ride regular width that they don't know soon. But when you get them on a whiteboard, they're like, they definitely like it more. Yeah, on a size, yeah, size 10, just a regular, regular width. Um, sweet. Yeah, let's just call it, call it there. But uh, yeah, thank you guys for coming to hang out. Uh, big shout out to John for hopping on here. Thanks for the questions. I'll put a link to uh, John's Instagram below. Also to the websites, uh, the Circles website and uh, Instagram. But uh, yeah, thank you guys for coming to hang out, talking about skateboarding and what you can do if you can't snowboard. Well, let's say it's he's sending it a million times, so we'll answer it. Thoughts oh. on Bert and Stefan? Yeah. Stephens? <laughs> he really wants to know. I think they're pretty awesome. I mean, I don't ride them, but like, I have friends that ride for Burton, and they actually surprised me. Like, they were like, they didn't, there was, it was like better. Like, oh. they were doing like back twos on the rails, like jumping. I've actually heard they're more responsive that because you're clicked in that like, there's no give of like heel lift or anything in the boat. Yeah. Like, I heard they're like more solid than regular. And like I got friends that like, they, they've got them and they're like, yeah, I haven't strapped it in years. Like they've been riding them since they came out and they love it. Wow. So crazy. I don't think I would get it to ride park and stuff, but I know people. They're just like they just go. Like if you want to ride around, like it's they're pretty awesome. Do you guys have step ons here? We don't. No. Um, it's I mean you need the the bindings, you need the boots. Right. Yeah. And all the feedback I've heard on them has been like amazing. Nice. Uh, Rob says step ons are the bomb. Dot com. Nice, man. Uh, sweet. All right, let's leave it there. Thanks, Sean. Thanks, guys. If you guys haven't yet, subscribe to the channel. Again, check out all the links in the description, and we'll see you guys next time. Later.